North East Tonight, brought to you by Oil India Limited, conquering newer horizons. Welcome to Notice Tonight, the show that decodes the region. The nation, viewers, is on an extended lockdown and perhaps that is the best option to control the spread of the deadly coronavirus. But at the same time, we cannot lose sight of the immense difficulties being faced by thousands of students and workers from Assam and the rest of the Northeast in different parts of the country. Most of our students and migrant workers are stuck in metros like Mumbai, Bengaluru, Delhi, Hyderabad, Pune and elsewhere, unable to return to their homes because of the lockdown. The big question is, how are they managing in these times of crisis? They have issues ranging from availability of cash in hand, food, issues of landlords asking for rent and even notices to vacate their accommodations, and in some odd cases, some of them have even faced nothing short of racial discrimination. To discuss their problems and how the Northeastern state governments and our MPs can come to their help, I am joined from New Delhi by Lok Sabha MP from Nogao in Assam, Mr. Pradut Bordoloi. Also from New Delhi, I am joined by Janice Lei Frakpam, a civil services aspirant from Manipur. Soon I'll be joined from Delhi by another student from Manipur, Kennedy Ningthausam. They are among hundreds of students from Manipur who have written to Chief Minister Biren Singh to bring them home. In Mumbai, I have Mr. Devasi Sharma, Joint Resident Commissioner of the Assam Bhavan, a busy man these days looking after the needs of 5,000 people from Assam stuck in the metropolis. I will also be joined from Chennai by Ms. Jaisri Datta from Assam a PhD student at IIT Madras. And from Guwahati University, I'm joined by Professor Akhil Ranjan Datta. Before we begin the discussions, ladies and gentlemen, let's listen to um, some migrant workers' voices from Mumbai who are facing numerous difficulties in the wake of the current crisis. Namaskar, my name is Sivatul Hazarika. 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 My name is Sivatul আমাৰ আজি লাগে ফেব্ৰুৱাৰী পৰা কোনো দমহা দিয়া নাই আমাৰ খোৱা বৰ কোনো সময় কোনো প্ৰবলেম হৈছে আৰু মোৰ লগত আজি অসমীয়া আছে আমাৰ মালিকে ৰুমৰ পৰা ওলাই যা বুলি কয় আমাৰ বহুত দিগদাৰ হৈছে পাৰিলে আপুনি আমাৰ অসম চৰকাৰৰ লগত যোগাযোগ কৰি আমাৰ কিবা কোনো খোৱা বৰ দিয়া ব্যৱস্থা কৰক আমাৰ মহাৰাষ্ট্ৰ চৰকাৰে কোনো খা সুবিধা দিয়া নাই আমি বহুত বিপদত পৰি আছো আমাৰ আগৰ যিকিটা পুৰণা পইচা আছে 7 টকা সেইকিটা ওলাই গ'ল এটা বস্তু বস্তু আনিবলো আমাৰ দিগদাৰ হৈছে Please, I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. Uh, let us also go to New Delhi, where I am joined by Janice. is a Manipuri student, uh, is a civil service aspirant, actually, from Manipur. Janice uh, Leifrak Pram. Uh, Janice, where are you now, and what are the difficulties you are facing, actually? I'm right now in uh, Santinagar, uh, Burari, in uh, North Delhi. So uh, right now uh, we have financial constraints uh, and uh, various uh, government initiatives have not uh, reached so far. And uh, even there is the incidence of some of the shopkeeper who refuse to give uh, not more than uh, 4 kg of uh, rice and the basic amenities and who find it very difficult for uh, some of us who are residing together. So and uh, there are many instances of ostracization and uh, people, uh, this man lender keep on calling us uh, corona and all. And, uh, Besides this uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic, there is uh, uh, more uh, challenges which are being faced by the North Standard uh, for the social insecurity and the economic uh, uh, circumstances which we are now facing here, sir. Okay, so Jenny, uh, you know, basically you are facing economic hardships, financial problems and problems in getting essential commodities, right, Jenny? Uh, yeah, I, I think both. Uh, uh, first one, uh, for the time being, uh, various government initiatives have been taken by our respective state government so far. But the uh, rationing system they have provided is not enough for us. And uh, secondly, uh, for uh, some of the landlords, uh, they even uh, force some of the tenants uh, to evacuate immediately if uh, they fail to uh, give the rent fees and all. 
And uh, uh, for the time being, uh, since the all, uh, lockdown situation is for the whole nationwide, uh, uh, the uh, uh, financial, yeah, yeah. Right, Janish, hold on, hold on, hold your thoughts. I'll come back to you, uh, Janish. Let us go to Chennai, where I am joined by Jayasree Dutta, a student from Assam. She is pursuing her PhD at IIT Madras. Uh, Jayasree Dutta, welcome to Notice tonight. Uh, tell us, how has the lockdown been for you? It has been already several weeks, actually. Jayasree. Uh, yes, it has been a very difficult time, especially the uncertainty. When it first started with Janta curfew, it seemed like it will open within two or three days, maybe maximum. So I thought that we'll get a flight maybe. But uh, very soon it was declared that it was a complete lockdown. All flights will be canceled. So I was, our hostels were shut down and uh, I, I booked this place, uh, a homestay under Airbnb uh, with this uh, senior citizen couple. And I started staying there and uh, it went on and on and on for a very long time. It is still going on. It's almost been a month now. And as you know, these homestays are very commercial, they're expensive. So it's kind of uh, really difficult right now because uh, because of all uh, everything that is happening right now in the news. And especially in my circumstances, I'm staying in Chennai and I don't know anything beyond our campus much. So staying outside and away from campus and uh, trying to get uh, groceries, and moreover, I'm feeling a little of a uh, bit of uh, psychological pressure also because you're staying with these people who you are not sure how long they can keep you or how long they'll be okay with this. So you feel like, are you being burdensome to them because they had agreed for some a sh much right. shorter period initially, but now you're just continuing on and on because they are also uncertain. And um, of course, food, food issues are there uh, because uh, they have to procure food for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Jayasree, we, we have an MP from Assam. I also take his reaction. But tell me, Jayasree, uh, did your institution, that is IIT Madras, give you any notice before they shut down the hostels? What has been uh, the situation, really? Jayasree. Yes, yes. They did, uh, they did give us a notice, but it was, uh, it was not clear for a uh, much long time. And um, th therefore, there was this confusion. And after that... Uh, after that, I thought that it will open and probably I should just stay a little longer and because the flights were very limited too and they were pretty expensive, very expensive. The last flight that I saw, it was uh, 70,000 from Chennai to Guwahati. So it, did, it, it seemed unlikely. I thought it was a panic. Uh, it was the panic among citizens yeah. for going home. So probably it's increasing because it's dynamic pricing. But then uh, it seemed like the panic was real and uh, it did shut down suddenly. So um, yeah, that time it was my decision to come outside and probably stay a little longer for a few days and then book a flight and leave because our hostels were shutting down and they were asking us to leave as soon as possible, as soon Ab as possible. Absolutely. Uh, Jayasree, stay on. Uh, Mr. Pradut Bordeloy, you have heard uh, three voices. One was a migrant worker who has not got his salary since February. And you have seen the two students run from Assam, the lady there, Jayasree. Uh, she has been, uh, the, her hostel was shut. She has been staying in an Airbnb accommodation. She's talking about, you know, that it is expensive for a student to stay for a prolonged period. Now, big challenge in hand for elected representatives like you, as well as the elected state governments in the entire Northeast, isn't it? Uh, how would you approach this problem? Vaspir, well, I have heard what Jayasri said, or Jenny's, or the migrant worker from Bombay, from Assam, who is in Bombay. Actually, uh, believe me, uh, this is a huge fallout of the COVID-19 lockdown that nobody anticipated or visualized, and least of all, the government of India here in Delhi. Actually, you can uh, understand the magnitude of the problem. I will just give you one example because I've personally experienced it. Now, to 2020, back in 2012, when I was a minister in Assam, that time there was some rumor in the southern states, if you recall, there was a mass exodus of the migrant workers, you know, yes. from especially from the northeast. And then that time, uh, you know, I was asked to handle this issue. So if you remember, there were, you know, lakhs of uh, workers, not only from Assam, but all over the northeast, they started coming back to the northeast. 
then we went out to all these states and tried to guess this problem and eventually you know we were so surprised we decided to have a baseline data as to how many what were the number of the migrant workers from assam working in different states that time in 2012 right. and can you believe it can you believe it washbe that time though it was not a very exhaustive data i i must agree but it was something like 8 lakhs you know a bulk yeah. of them were working as and still have been working probably as security guards from all over assam especially you know morigao nogao and all these districts then uh, you know very definite pattern of these migrant workers no, i am just not even mentioning about the students there are also thousands yeah the students are also in all over the places they are scattered pan indian basis okay but more than students are let me tell you there are migrant workers and they are working in every state of the country when the lockdown was imposed we really never realized and we ourselves because parliament was one and all of a sudden the lockdown was announced and next day the delhi government declared lockdown followed by mr modi's lockdown and flights were cancelled trains were cancelled even we got stranded in delhi yeah most of my colleagues from assam yeah. and north east are still stranded in delhi i am now and i know i want to tell you the magnitude see then we realize it all these people migrant workers slowly after 5 days 6 days as the lockdown was on then they were also getting in touch with them i'm sure they were also getting in touch with everybody tell the television channels and other people in assam government of assam you know then we realized that some people could somehow make it back to assam but most of them are still living in their rented accommodation in the cramped place probably yeah. cramped in some yeah. some a, a small room probably four or five of them are sharing cooped right. up there and yes. they, by now they have all exhausted their savings they don't have so, money so you have and explained again, yes this is the problem as mr product bordlo has very rightly described the magnitude of the problem i'll come back to you for a solution how you need to approach this you see uh, mr bordlo uh, you are you are among those people i'm sure you will understand that today we are not having you as a representative of any political party we are having you as an mp from assam as a political leader to whom everybody uh, uh, will look up to for solutions so i will come to you in a minute for how do you expect now you see now uh, lockdown good or bad that is beside the point now there is lockdown how to resolve this issue in the middle of the lockdown is the main question i'll come back to you to on that okil ranjan datta pretty much the same question to you we are in a lockdown we have heard three of our uh, northeastern voices uh, people will come back to them again uh, you know they are having great difficulty three difficulties the land they have not got their salaries as far as migrant workers as far as students are concerned uh, there some of them have been asked to vacate their houses some of them the hostels are shut they have no cash so now what is your suggestion uh, to the state governments now let me tell you the assam government is now working on a helpline they have a helpline where people can contact and there there will be some resolution to their problems and government of arunachal pradesh has decided to give 3500 rupees per head and government of manipur has decided to give 2000 rupees per head to the people of their respective states i will show you those tweets soon but okil ranjan that uh, your first response Uh, let me first start with the magnitude of the problem as you have said that government of assam has opened a helpline and they have been working on it uh, uh, they call it assam cares now if you look at the assam care helpline the government of assam has received around 9 to 10 lakh missed calls even if there are repetitions of the call i think that will not be less than 5 lakh or 4 lakh so the magnitude is very very high uh, the my understanding is that first we didn't uh, we we never had a had an experience of uh, uh, you know pandemic we were talking about uh, epidemic and so on and so forth and government was also not very much prepared for it but then now we have to think what are the alternatives or what are the solutions we can have I saw a ND tele, a NDTV uh, you know report NDTV television report and they were talking about the uh, you know food surplus in FCI Food Corporation of India uh, 
And the estimate is this, that we have around, uh, we have surplus which can meet the needs for another six to seven or seven to eight months, but those have not yet been opened up properly. I think this is the time that we have to think about all these things. Okay. The other point I'll be telling okay. that we have to work in a true federal spirit. We have to work in a true federal spirit, and it is the hour when the central government has to work as the true coordinator. They okay. have to be in right. touch now, with let me, every state ab government. Absolutely. And that, that coordination, coordination that, is necessary. Yes, please. Coordination is necessary. Uh, before I go to Mr. Devasish Sharma, yes. the resident commissioner, the joint resident commissioner in Mumbai is looking after 5,000 people in distress. Uh, Mr. Pradut Bordoloi, uh, you know, we have got 25 MPs from, uh, from the Northeast. Do you think there is scope for some kind of a coordination between all these 25 MPs so that jointly, uh, jointly you can take up the matter with the respective state governments, whether the government of Maharashtra, whether it is the government of Karnataka, whether it is the government of Andhra Pradesh and Telangana, and government of Delhi. So these are the major cities, you know, where our, uh, uh, apart from Tamil Nadu, of course, where students from the Northeast and workers are in maximum. How do you see the road ahead? Do you think the MPs also have a big role to play at this juncture to coordinate and ease things out for our people? I just want to give you again, you know, we were actually also caught in the cobweb in yeah. such a way but we are reaching out to all these people because all these migrant workers, more than the students, actually migrant workers, have got in touch with us, individual, to me, to Gaurav, my colleague, or Abdul Khalik, or, you know, Mr. Ripun Bora, or other MPs, I'm sure, from the Northeast. So what I have been, I just want to give you an example how we are trying to help them out. See, we are ourselves stranded here. But what we have done, for example, there were about 21 workers, migrant workers, they got stranded in Trivandrum, Oscars of Trivandrum. So what I did, you know, I tried to contact the Kerala government, but it was I was not successful. So immediately, what I did, I got in touch with Dr. Sasi Tharu, my you know my colleague, because there's one advantage of ours that you know, irrespective of political party, whether it's DMK or Westside Cong Congress or you know whatever, all the political parties, Sipsana or, you know, all other political, right. BJP, we keep meeting them in the parliament. So we have developed a friendship. We have gotten to know each other. And this is this is the time that I have reached out to, whenever these problems come, I have reached out to my colleagues from the parliament. Because I have asked them, that, suppose, again, I'm giving you another example. There were about uh, 10 to 15 migrant workers from Assam. They are also uh, stranded near Amritsar, you know, in Punjab. So what I did, I got in touch with Jasbir Singh Gill, another member of parliament, Lok Sabha. I got in touch with him. I told him this problem. And believe me, all yeah. my MPs, our friends in different states, they have also gotten uh, gotten into action and they have helped them out. So so there is coordination going on. That is, the MPs are on the job. Some coordination going on. Maybe as the days proceed, uh, you know, it has no, to be... But I have, a, I have a suggestion now, realizing that, see, this we are doing on our individual capacity, okay? We are obviously, you know, most of these workers, they have exhausted no money. They are very desperate to go back to Assam or other states of the Northeast. But as we know, I, we, we keep them, uh, you know, assured that the moment this transportation is, you know, revoked, the, whatever, there's this standard people where the trains start start functioning obviously they will be facilitated to come back to assam if they want but now the problem is their sustenance so that is why i am personally giving you know my money to their respective bank accounts i have already finished my parliament parliament bank account whatever salary that i get you know everything i adjusted for them but All what right. i'm saying All right. now the government of assam it's a meanwhile and as you rightly mentioned what we did, the Northeast-based MPs, we have uh, started a WhatsApp group of our own, you know, all, all the MPs, regional parties and okay, others. Okay, we will, we will so develop... We we will develop on that, Mr. Pradut Bordeloy. That That is a point I would like to develop uh, that Northeastern MPs, they have at least formed a group and started communicating. Let me go to Mumbai. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Devasish uh, Sharma is the Joint Resident Commissioner of the Assam Bhavan. Uh, Devasish, you know, give us an idea. 
Uh, you know, the lockdown has impacted a lot of people all over the country. There are thousands from Assam as well. Now, can you give us an overview of how many people are affected from Assam and what are the difficulties they are facing? Uh, you know, Devasish. You see, Vazbir, the situation in Mumbai is too prone. First of all, uh, I would like to talk about the cancer patients and their relatives who are stranded here in Mumbai. And secondly, the daily wage earners from Mumbai, where, you know, who are in thousands. Yeah. So now, uh, so far as the cancer patients are concerned, right. many of them, around 70% of them have been turned back who had come for their checkups have been turned back by the Tata Memorial Hospital because of, for obvious reasons, uh, they could not be seen. So these people had come for around, for a maximum of around one week to 10 days. Right. And they uh, did not, after the lockdown, they did not have a, a place to go. Many of them were staying in hotels or some lodges near Tata Memorial Hospital. But then after the lockout, uh, after the lockdown, there was, um, they faced hardships and they had to be brought to uh, Assam Bhavan, as well as our Deep Shika shelters. So um, now uh, that would be around, you know, uh, 150 uh, in Assam Bhavan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, there was a right, gone. Right. Yeah. And uh, and over and above that, we have, you know, we had set up a helpline. So in that helpline, we started receiving many calls, and we were surprised to find. Uh, I mean. So many years in Bombay, I did not know. Uh, but there are thousands of people, of uh, boys from Assam, working in a place called Taloja. And uh, in Taloja, it is the MIDC area where uh, they have those factories. And we have many uh, boys from Assam working in the packaging factory, uh, in the ice factory, in the uh, in the fish packaging uh, industry. And then, uh, and then, you know, see, these are in, in Taloja, there are around 4,000 people. Yeah. And then you move to places like Andheri, uh, Ghatkopar, Bhayandar, uh, then, uh, you know, uh, Mankrud, uh, Boriveli. All these places we have been receiving calls. And they have been frantically calling us up for rations. And there is another section of people who want to go back home, right? So um, yeah. they are being, you know, some a section of uh, these people have been provided rations and, uh, and shelter by... Uh, the 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 concerns where they are working for, but then otherwise uh, most of them, around eighty percent of them, are in dire straits because they were given a certain amount of money, maybe around a thousand rupees, immediately after the lockdown. But now they are not able to contact the the their contractors and the people who brought them. So right. that's it. Now, Devasis, what is the Assam government doing? Uh, uh, Through you, of course, the Assam Bhavan uh, about. Uh, these people, how are you handling the situation? Do we have a list of such people? What is the number like? Yes, we do have a list. So far as cancer patients are concerned, it is 150 in the Assam Bhavan, 200 in uh, Deep Shikha. And then there are people, around 100 people or people staying in hotels near Tata Memorial Hospital, lodges and hotels near Tata Memorial Hospital. So um, government of Assam had immediately, once we uh, sent the call, they had immediately sanctioned 10 lakh of rupees with the assurance that they would sanction more money if we require. So with that 10 lakh of rupees, the food in Devshika as well as uh, uh, this, uh, you know, the, the patients staying in Assam Bhavan, that is numbering 350, it has been made free. Then we have procured rations. And since uh, we needed more funds, we needed more stuff. I mean, this 10 lakh of rupees, the initial amount which was given, that went to a great extent. I mean, that helped to a great extent. But we had made an appeal. So help started pouring in from all quarters. Right. The, the Assamese diaspora living in Mumbai. And then uh, there were other people like the Roundtable Conference uh, and many other people who chipped in to help. So as of now, we have been able to, till yesterday, we have been able to reach out to 4,700 people, out of which, is from the day of the Bihu onwards, you know, we have opened a counter in Assam Bhavan, where uh, from morning 10 o'clock to evening 5 o'clock onwards, we distribute rations. And as a gesture of good, yeah, you're saying something? So, yeah, I'm, I, yes. Devasish, you know. Uh, and um, this was, you know, uh, as a gesture of goodwill, 
um, we had been receiving a lot of uh, calls from uh, different workers, daily wage workers from the northeastern states also. Right. So we extended the, the facility to these workers as a Bihu gift, uh, Assam being right. the, the right. eldest sister. So, right. Right. Devasish, uh, you know, you have said 4,700 students, uh, 700 people, 4,700 people, not students, uh, workers, family members. Uh, that is what you are saying, isn't it? For four to 5,000 people you are dealing with now, including cancer patients and their attendants. Students, students have uh, been able to manage because I believe their parents are looking after them. We have not received any calls from, uh, from students, but then definitely... These are cancer patients, their relatives, and daily wage workers. There are thousands and thousands of daily wage workers who are working in different factories uh, and different establishments like security guards too uh, in, in the city of Mumbai. All right. Uh, Devasish, hold on. I'll come back to you. Quickly go. Uh, Mr. Pradut Bordeloy, I'll have to go for a break. I'll come back very, very quickly to you. Let me quickly go to Janice uh, in Delhi. Janice, uh, we have a figure. We have roughly a figure in Mumbai. Now, as far as Delhi Manipuri students are concerned, Janice, uh, do you have any idea how many Manipuri students are stranded in New Delhi? Uh, so far, as yes, we can uh, enlisted uh, from our uh, information uh, that uh, we have been collected so far. Uh, right now, we got uh, more than uh, 500 students in our enlisted list, and uh, then, uh, more uh, numbers are coming. And uh, right now, I can uh, tell roughly more than 2,000 students are being stranded here in Delhi from Manipur. Now, we will show you the tweet right now as we speak, Janice. Uh, you have also you have also written to Chief Minister Biden Singh, uh, you know, wanting to be evacuated from Delhi. Tell us something about that. What have you written to your chief minister? Uh, well, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We have posted a letter to uh, Facebook and Twitter account of our respected uh, honorable CM on 25th March 2020. Still, the chief minister office has not responded so far as far as this evacuation is concerned. Okay, okay, we'll go for a break. That was the tweet uh, by the Manipur chief minister and Biren Singh, where he talked about you know, assistance uh, to students from uh, Manipur stranded in different parts of the country. The, he was saying that, you know, we are helping our people who are stranded and stuck outside the state due to COVID-19. Till now, 3,771 stranded people outside the state have been provided rupees 2,000 each through direct bank transfer. Remaining around 10 to 11,000 will be provided the same amount within the two to three days. That is what and Biren Singh is saying in this particular tweet. I'll go for a short break, viewers. Don't go away. I'll be right back. Welcome back, Mr. Mr. Pradut Bordeloy. Uh, you know, uh, now it, Assam government has said very rightly so that when the lockdown is over, thousands of students would like to, you know, uh, students and workers would like to come home. Uh, that will be difficult because, you know, they have to be quarantined for 14 days. That is the protocol. Now they have to register themselves. They have to have some kind of an arrangement worked out. So it's a huge task ahead, isn't it? Uh, to discipline the even the returning home will not be that easy now. And what is your appeal to the students and workers? Uh, how they will have to better coordinate with the government and the authorities and with the elected MPs. Well, uh, Vasbir, as I said earlier, the magnitude of the problem is such a huge magnitude. So we must understand that you know, government of Assam unilaterally uh, cannot actually uh, handle it. They, as it is, government of Assam's, uh, you know, hand is, hands are full. But what I basically would like to tell you and appeal to the government of Assam through you. See, what Deb uh, Debasis is say, Debasis, is, you know, that's just a tip of a uh, huge iceberg. Debasis, I know he's a very excellent, responsible officer. He's handling it well in, uh, in probably in Maharashtra, in Mumbai. 
But in the southern states, mostly, and mostly our students and migrant workers are in southern states and also other parts of the country. This is the time that government of Assam gave why. You see, approximately, according to my estimate, there are about 15 lakhs migrant workers are working in different parts of the country. And every month, if you take a average figure, every month they send about 2,000 rupees to their families every month, average, average. So 15 lakhs into 2,000 is approximately about almost a four crores rupees. We are getting inward remittances in Assam for, for, uh, yeah. for multiplying the economic activities. I'm just giving an example. Now, now I think this, all these migrant workers, students, students, you see, government of Assam, number one, this uh, miscall, this whatever number is doing, actually that is not working fine because people are not, not getting any response. So I think the government of Assam first must establish a dedicated control room at, at, at a call center, a dedicated with very responsible that is, officers. That is coming up, uh, Mr. Bordelot, that is coming up. Okay, no, that no, is, then, then, that, then what, I, what I, my suggestion is this, yeah. government of Assam should... You know, after getting all this bank details, bank account, government of Assam should transfer like money as the Manipur government is proposing. Government of Assam should also transfer directly some money into the accounts till such time that you know okay. the lockdown I think that is, is a that is a I think that is that is a fair suggestion. That is a fair suggestion. What Mr. Pradut Bordoloi uh, uh, is saying that you know government of Assam should consider transferring bank account transferring some cash directly into the bank accounts of these stranded people. Dr. Okilranjan Dutta, very quickly, uh, do you think, you know, now, like we have the Assam Bhavans in yeah. very few places, like we have Devasi Sharma in uh, taking care of things in Mumbai, we yeah. have a setup in Delhi, but do you think we should quickly appoint temporary liaison officers? Okilranjan Dutta on the screen, please. Uh, Okil Ranjan Datta, you know, do you think uh, yeah. we, we, yeah. we need to appoint some liaison officers very quickly in some of the states where we have large number of people? I think so. That can, uh, I think, I don't think that that's a, that's a big problem. That can surely be done. That is why I was telling, I was talking about the coordination that we need. We are not that of resources, remember. Don't, uh, it's not that we don't have the resources. For example, we have the migrant laborers, uh, you know, stranded in all these places. But we have also different locations where these people could be, uh, you know, could be... Uh, resettled uh, for the time being. For example, right. all educational institutions, all hostels have been vacated. And it's an emergency situation. All those institutions could be used for keeping the people. And right. therefore, coordination is very important. And temporarily appointing some, some uh, officers as a licensing officer is not a problem. Not it's a problem. Not necessary so that, is, that, that, is, that can be, be we can think about, the, uh, we, you know, uh, right. Uh, 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 Right. We can think about appointing. That is what Okhil is uh, conquering. We can think about appointing liaison officers. Let me also bring in uh, Kennedy Ningtozam, another student from New Delhi, uh, is joining me right now. Uh, Kennedy Ningtozam, uh, welcome. Where are you located and what do you have to say? What are your difficulties? He is from Manipur. Kennedy Ningtozam is a student. Uh, I'm staying in Patel Chase, uh, North Delhi. Uh, uh, actually, we have a lot of grievances due to the further extensions of lockdown. Uh, uh, like uh, financial problems, social insecurity, as well as racial, uh, racial act we are facing. Sir. So, uh, Kennedy, you know, what is the assistance or what kind of help you are getting from Manipur government or are you getting anything at all? Yeah, of course, sir. We, uh, actually, we are receiving some... Uh, 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 we are receiving some rations from the uh, from the okay. government, sir. Then, uh, but it, but it's still not sufficient. More than that, uh, even we are not receiving some. They, they they told me they told me that we we will be receiving some financial assistance as well. Mm -hmm. But still, then we are not yet we are not yet satisfied with that one. So we want we uh, we want more. Uh, we want more assistance. So, you are basically running short of cash. Is that the main problem? Lack of money? 
Kennedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, that's the real, real issue, I should say. Yeah. What was okay. it? Yes, yes, uh, Mr. Porter Bordeloy, carry on. Yeah, actually, there's another dimension of the problem. Actually, actually, you have forgotten to mention that another dimension is this. Most of our guys, can you hear, hear me? Yes, yes, Hello. carry on, carry on, uh, yes. Okay, most of our guys are facing racial discrimination in certain states, you know, especially, you know, students and uh, migrant workers from other states, uh, neighboring states of Assam. And we are also, we have to deal with this because very unfortunate incidents have taken place in various places, whether it's in Gujarat or in uh, Bangalore or Mangalore or even even in Chandigarh, you see, very unfortunately. So, uh, you know, this racial discrimination is, is also another dimension, which also has to be dealt by all of us. And government of Assam obviously has to take a very proactive stand, and I'm sure all these suggestions will be sunk in and they will, you know, take it forward. Absolutely. Uh, Jayasri Dutta in Chennai. Uh, Kennedy, I'm coming to you. Kennedy and Janice, I'm coming to you. Devasish also, I'm coming to you. Uh, Jayasri, now what is your expectation now? You know, uh, difficulties like financial and what are the other difficulties you are facing? What do you want to do? Yeah, the first uh, difficulty that came to my mind is how long can I stay like this in a homestay where you are being charged per day basis. But uh, apart from that, uh, the main difficulty right now is the uncertainty, how we will uncertainty. be taken no, care Jai of Shri, by the government, how has, we will be, has, has, uh, Shri, how Shri, Shri, has anybody from the Assam government contacted you? Has anybody from the Assam government contacted you? Yeah, I, I got to know about that uh, phone number. Uh, uh, Dr. Himanta Vishwasharma in his press conference talked about it. So I did reach out there, but uh, there were uh, there was one inconsistency in uh, in in the real ground reality of that is that yeah it did give us back uh, an SMS giving us a link to fill our details, but the first page of it has three declarations, and the third declaration is is your family under the five lakh income bracket under it. So if I don't click it then I can't go to that next page where it asks for further details. That means it shows that, but in his uh, press conference, he had mentioned that uh, if, uh, if this, this process will be used not only for financial assistance, but also for helping out citizens, evacuating citizens one by one, or case to case basis after this ends. But okay. the problem is, if you cannot fill your details, and if you are b not okay, no, below no, no, the Jai Shri, like, uh, Shri, your problem is, you are saying that, you know, that particular form, which the Assam government is giving online form, there is that 5 lakh ceiling. Anybody whose income is below 5 lakhs can apply. Is that your problem? Correct. Correct. So this form should be accessible for everyone to fill their details in spite, in, in spite of uh, whatever the declaration is so that we feel secure that we have registered our, uh, that we are in need of help. Um, and not just, uh, it should not look like we are just asking for financial assistance because, of course, that is a problem amongst many. It's a privilege that it's not that much for certain people. But, uh, yeah, that is a problem. But the further details should be available to everyone to fill up so that it is, so, so that at least we feel that assurance that we have been registered. But we are not, uh, at least till now, I was not able to do that. That okay. is a problem. Okay, yeah. Jay, Jay hold on. Uh, Devasish, uh, you know, the, now the now the lockdown has been extended till the 3rd of May uh, and people would like to return home. So what is the direction you have received from the government of Assam? Have you received any, any advisory from the government of Assam? Well, uh, we, were, uh, we have been told that definitely, I mean, the, the uh, Honorable Health Minister went to the extent of saying that he would hire a plane, a plane to transport the uh, the cancer patients and their relatives, uh, which was uh, a very, 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 very significant gesture, uh, which I'm sure will be fulfilled uh, as time comes. Along with that, the rest of the people, the frantically, those people who have been calling up our helpline, we have been assuring them and telling them that, you see, it would maybe not possible uh, for them to go, you know, all together in a bulk, right? Because yeah. there are thousands of them who want to go. So it would happen in different phases along with certain uh, rules and regulations about the, the, the manner in which they should travel in trains uh, and, and any public transport. So once I'm sure after the third, the government will consider 
uh, opening these uh, modes of transport. And uh, if the directions are properly followed, I'm sure we should be able to send most of them home. Okay, Devasish, uh, you know, now the breaking story is that uh, as Devasish uh, Sharma, the, the Joint Resident Commissioner of the Assam Bhavan in Mumbai is saying that the Assam Health Minister, Dr. Hemantabhish Sharma, has said that he will be uh, bringing over the cancer patients stranded in Mumbai as well as their attendants in a chartered plane to Guwahati after the lockdown ends. That is the breaking story at this point in time. Now, Devasish, you, were, you, you, you talked about the helpline number. Uh, is it the helpline number in Assam Bhavan? Is it the local helpline number you are talking about? Or are you talking about the state helpline number? I'm talking about this because they call us, the people in Mumbai, because it has been flashed in the media, and they call our helpline. That is my cell number, uh, three more officers of Assam Bhavan, and the reception. So there are four helpline numbers as of now. Uh, so these uh, people try, people call in these numbers. No, no, people would like to know, uh, you, are providing, you are providing essentials to about 5,000 people from Assam. Uh, what, what does the packet contains, really? Very basic, very basic. Uh, we provide uh, rice, dal, mustard oil, and salt. That is all. Now, what about people, Devasish, what about people stranded in hotels? People from Assam stranded in hotels. Uh, they must be running out of cash, Devasish. Yes, there are many hotels and there are many people who are stranded like, uh, stranded like that. So what we have done, those people who have contacted us, we have sought the help of Mumbai police and requested them to speak to these hotel owners. And we have done uh, at uh, you know certain hotels, we have done it ourselves with the help of Mumbai police, gone and requested them to provide them basic food and shelter till the situation is over with the assurance that we would be guaranteeing, we would be seeing to it that because we have spoken to those people, they say that it is not possible for us to get the money right now, but it does not mean that we are not going to pay. All they need is some, you know, breathing time. Okay. So people have or, been or, very kind. All right. Uh, Devasis, uh, hold I, your, I hold your all... thoughts. Hold your thoughts. I have to go to Mr. Pradut Bordlo in New Delhi. But quickly, before that, Janice, you know, you have written a letter to the Chief Minister of Manipur requesting him to evacuate the Manipuri students from Delhi and bring them home, that is, to Manipur. Now, have you got any response from the Manipur government, Janice? Uh, yeah, majority of the students are facing hardship like this. Uh, besides this COVID-19, uh, more challenging is the social insecurity and this racial, racial attack and ostracization being faced by this uh, Nordistan, uh, particularly in this uh, Delhi area where we are residing right now. So, so far, various measures have been taken, uh, but implementation is not uh, satisfied uh, in terms of this uh, rationing system and the financial uh, services uh, which they are, they are being provided till now. Okay, quickly also go to, I'm coming to you, uh, Doc, Mr. Pradut Bordloy. Kennedy, uh, Kennedy, you know, um, uh, we have heard your friend from Imphal, your friend from Manipur. Uh, what do you also want to do? Do you want Manipur government to take you back home? And do you think uh, that is a good idea? Yes, sir, that's the, uh, that's the maximum possible. If uh, Manipur government could act on that way, we'll be very, we'll be very happy uh, if uh, if we have been uh, evacuated from from various part of uh, India, no, no, Kennedy, no. You said that you are getting rations. Are you getting at your doorstep, or do you have to go somewhere to collect the rations? And how easy or difficult it is? Sir, yes, uh, we need to go and collect it. Uh, uh, as of now, uh, for some, if it, uh, if uh, if they could provide if. Sometimes place even matters. Some uh, we do not even we do not even reach. Uh, uh, there are some places that which they directly directly it's not possible to reach. So uh, for uh, it happen uh, it depend it depend on the location, sir. Now, Mr. Pradut Bordeloy. Uh, now it is you see it is easy for any government to say that okay we'll provide you rations. Uh, but it is very difficult to actually physically, you know, how can you, ex now this boy is saying, can, Kennedy is saying that he has to go somewhere to collect the rations. Now in a lockdown where, you know, you, every means of communication is locked up, I mean, it's shut. 
Now, how do you go and collect it? So, you cannot also blame the government. How can the government put everything in the, somebody's doorstep? So, it's a huge logistic no. issue. No, no, this is obviously it's a huge problem. And, and I don't think even government of Assam can uh, reach out to everybody, whoever is there outside Northeast, and give them you know, this kind of logistical support. That is not possible. But I think we have to prioritize and we have to make categories. For example, there can be three categories. The cancer patient obviously is a topmost priority because these cancer patients have to be evacuated because if they are not getting treatment now, Say, what Debasis is told about evacuation by chartered flight, Bombay. Bombay, yes, a large number of cancer patients routinely go, but there are also a very large number of cancer patients now stranded in places like Chennai, places like Velour, or even Delhi, because Delhi also I know about five, six cancer patients, and now they are in a dire strait. They got in touch with me. So we have to prioritize. We have to somehow reach out to them, to their attendants. Number two, the migrant workers. And migrant workers, whomever I met, I keep telling them there's no point going back to Assam now because even if you go to Assam, you will be quarantined. Yes. So they are desperate to go back to their yes. home. Yes. So what we can do, and dire, their dire needs is money, really. Because, mind you, the migrant workers, they come from such families that even families can't support them, you know? Comparatively, the students are better luck because students actually can fall back on their own families in Assam. At least some bank transfers can take place if students are studying in different universities. Exactly. You know, they are getting money from their parents. So students can still get some support from their parents and, you know, home front. But migrant workers, I'll tell you now, the situation is very different. I can tell you another example in Gajiabad, you know, outskirts of Delhi. There are about 4, 5, 14, 15 migrant workers from my constituency. They were sending me desperate SOS. Then I got them checked, I checked their background and all. They all come from very impoverished families. Their families cannot support them. And one migrant worker conscious not having food. So some Right, we are having some difficulty with Mr. Pradut Bordelois. I'll come back to you, Pradut. Uh, uh, Dr. Okhiranjan Dutta, uh, you know, I think, you know, I mean, it's, a, it's not a great yeah. idea. As soon as the lockdown ends, it is not a great idea for everybody to come back home. Because as Mr. Pradut Bordelois very rightly said, even if you come home, you'll be quarantined for 14 days. So where is the space for quarantining so many people? It will be a, a, so. Why not the Assam government, or for that matter, the governments in the Northeast? Some of them are already doing it. Provide some cash incentive to the people, and and if possible, stay on for some couple of more weeks and at least finish the quarantine period before uh, things ease out a bit. Is that a good solution? No, that as I said, that government of Assam has already initiated that program. As I said, that around. Uh, 10 lakh missed calls have been received and they have been sent back uh, the form to be filled up. And out of that, already 2 lakh uh, people have filled up their forms and probably those have already been, the process has started uh, to dispatch the money through the bank account. Not that government has not been doing it. Government has been doing it. Absolutely. But what will be the amount? We are not very sure about or whether that will be enough. And that will be enough for, you know, to meet the needs we are not very aware of. Now, this is a very unconventional kind of challenges. And therefore, we have to think beyond, uh, you know, the conventional ways. Therefore, I have been totally telling that the, it is important that central government coordinates everywhere. We are not that of resources. Resources will definitely come. But we need coordination among various departments of the government. For example, we have the civil supplies department. We have the department of agriculture. We have the department of sports. We have the department of law and justice and all. What we have, been, uh, what we have seen, only one particular department is working uh, as the frontline department. Other departments we are not very sure about. Now, this is the uh, moment where we have to mobilize each and every department. And they have to be given given the responsibility of coordination. And if we can coordinate between the central government and state governments across the country right. and among various departments right. within right. the state government right. and central government, yes. many of these problems could be addressed. Resolved. I will yes. I have to cut you short. Taking I'm running absolutely short of telling. time. Uh, taking my, back is not my a... Last uh, yeah. question, my last question to you, Jayashree, last question. Uh, you know, uh, you see... You have any problem in you? Do you have any problem in coming back to Assam? You know when the lockdown ends and going through a quarantine process, which is mandatory. 
Are you prepared for that? Jayashree. Uh, yeah, I was not sure that the quarantine process outside will be mandatory because so far, whoever went by flight, they were given stamps of home quarantine. And I thought if people did not have symptoms, that was that was fine for two uh, two reasons. Because number one, quarantine centers cannot be blocked up, blocked up by people who do not need it. And number two, uh, maybe there... Because, of course, you have to think, sometimes people think individually, and maybe there is a risk of getting newly infected if you go there. So some kind of um, this yeah. uh, whole mix-up is going on in my brain, like what will be the correct way of uh, reaching here. Yeah, uh, because your parents tend to tend, tend to be tensed key if you're fine and still you're quarantined, what, you, what if you get it there or what if you get it on the flight? So what do we do in that so lot, yeah. lot of dilemma there. You are uh, perfectly fine now. Uh, what is what happens when you come, whether uh, the flights are safe, whether the quarantine facility. So these are the issues. Now, my final question to you, my last question to you, Devasish. My last question, Devasish, what is your appeal to the migrant workers from Assam in Mumbai? Uh, was we right, first of all, like to tell them not to panic, first of all, and, and not make a beeline to rush home because certain things are not practically possible. People, yeah. all of them cannot rush. So when they speak to us, I mean, we receive hundreds of calls during the day. I mean, there are times when uh, our phones are ringing almost every second minute. Yeah. So we just try to tell them that, you see, you have to be patient, first of all. And secondly, the government has assured all possible help. So be, be patient, Devasish, be patient. And government has, be patient is the call from Debasi Sharma, looking after 5,000 people. Yes, uh, Pradut Bordeloy, uh, 20 seconds, final comments. I, I, will, I will just add to what Debasi has said. I think apart from giving money, now that we will have this database of all the num telephone numbers, mobile numbers, I think government of Assam should put up this control room and counseling is required. You know, through telephone, I think some control room, some, you know, control room should reach out to each and every person and counseling is required because everybody is aggrieved, everybody is worried, they are, you know, they'll be mad scrambled. So counseling is also very much a all these people. I think that is a very uh, a good suggestion, very reasonable suggestion that now that you have a database of, uh, you know, several thousand and lakhs of people from Assam, uh, you better have utilized this one step further and counsel them, address their concerns and worries. Final comment, 20 seconds to you, Dr. Kilranjan Datta, to wrap up. I think that is the way to go ahead. Uh, you know, you have to appeal to all the people who are stranded to uh, have patience because you cannot think in terms of bringing them back. Uh, the government ha of Assam has initiated the program and they will be transferring uh, the case and other things. But the yeah. coordination that I mentioned and the liaisoning officers in different states will be very, very important here. Absolutely. Several suggestions have come out in this discussion today. The government can consider, the governments in the northeast can consider appointing liaison officers in those major cities where they already don't have and where we have a lot of our students. And as Mr. Pradut Bordeloy said, there has to be coordination among the northeastern MPs. They are already working on it, but it has to gather momentum. Perhaps uh, Mr. Bordeloy can take the initiative in doing that. And uh, thirdly, of course, uh, uh, suggestions coming that, uh, you know, instead of providing rations, which are in any case difficult to uh, collect, uh, direct cash transfers to the accounts as some of the state governments in the Northeast are already doing. But yes, we have to understand that this is a humongous problem that all the youths and the migrant workers from Northeast are facing uh, in this lockdown period. But perhaps we'll emerge from this crisis on that. With that hope in mind, I end this edition of Northeast tonight. I thank all my panelists for participating in the program and the viewers for watching the show. Good night and goodbye. Northeast Tonight, brought to you by Oil India Limited, conquering newer horizons.